Okay, I am back. I just talked for five minutes and nothing was recorded. Isn't that great? <laughs> what was I talking about? Okay, I was going to get into my history with Sousa. So I, I was pretty happy with Sousa up till about version 11. And then I, there was a little bit of fragmentation. There was like various computers that I couldn't get 11 one on. You know, I uh, th this this brown one down here, the red stereo. It's got a hill inside, pinning four on it. Um, that one. There's two models that look that look like that one, and if that's one of the two models, they had the certain Intel video card in it. It wouldn't allow a SUSE. 11.2 installed to work, or 11.1, one of those versions, it just went to a black screen. Um, whereas before it worked fine. It had something to do with the changeover between X, X386 and Xorg, and the direction Xorg went, which doesn't make any sense to me, because again, I think Intel has two members of the X consortium, two two employees of Intel are board members of the X Consortium, so it kind of boggles my mind. And maybe the answer isn't that it's the X Consortium, but it's that the distributions are starting to... Uh, I'll just use the word pander to the, the Free Software Foundation. I'm not against the Free Software Foundation. I am for it to a certain extent. In fact, uh, if I had to choose between the open source philosophy and the Free Software Foundation philosophy, I would say that the Free Software Foundation is logically consistent where the open source one is not, at least in my mind. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, just because I say it doesn't make it true for anybody watching, so I don't get pissed off at me. That's my opinion. Okay? I'm not going to explain it right now. I'm doing open SUSE. But, um,. What, what's become apparent to me in the past little while here that I've been doing installations and getting things on various computers is that radio, ATI will make their video drivers, Intel will make their driver, video drivers, and NVIDIA will make their video drivers. And they make them available and free of cost in the public. So why don't why don't why doesn't OpenSUSE, why doesn't Fedora, why doesn't Mandriva, why don't all these different distributions just put those drivers in the installer so you won't have any problems? Well, they don't, and the reason is because the Free Software Foundation is against it because the, the source code is not open. You know, the source code is just a compiled binary, there's no source code with it, so if someone wanted to modify the source code that they couldn't, that's what the Free Software Foundation stands for, the, the the ability for users to modify source code, pass it on, and not have that right taken away from anybody in the future. That's 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 good, that's right, I don't, don't want to deny anybody, but I'm not in favor of the flip side of avoiding software that that doesn't have source code with it when it comes down to practical things because there's other there's other applications in here now that I'm not going to be able to use if I don't have a, a video driver that have that has a source code available you know what I mean it's like you know you gotta you gotta get past the basic stuff before you start <laughs> cutting things out and 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 every one of these distributions know that if they start putting these proprietary drivers in without making the users jump through a hoop or answer a question, do you want to install these proprietary video, <clears throat> video drivers, as in Ubuntu and as in Linux Mint, that um, they're going to get a backlash from a vocal and significantly large enough size of the community that they'll, they'll complain, those people will complain more than the actual end users. Okay? Which, uh, Maybe we should take a lesson from, but <laughs> nonetheless. Um, so, um, I wasn't able to install a few versions. In fact, on this new computer here, an HP uh, Elite, I think 7100MT, 
um, will not uh, SUSE 11.2 will, will won't install. Now, apparently, there's an open source driver that will allow that's been incorporated with whatever packages SUSE provides in 11.3 that will allow it to install. Okay. Um, so I so I did the install, but I I, I wanted my wobbly windows and I wanted my uh, spinning cube boxes, so I decided I what I wanted to do was install the uh, proprietary drivers to, to get that. And um, at least I was convinced that's what I needed to do. I'm not so sure that that's what I had to do, but nonetheless, that's what I did. And um, when you do it in Ubuntu. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to compare these things to give you a rough idea. So when you, what happens in Ubuntu is when you, after you finish the install the first time you boot in, a little box will scroll down and say, there are proprietary drivers available for this distribution. Do you want to install them? Well, certainly, because why? Well, for me, I, I don't know how to edit source code. I can't. I might be able to edit a bash shell script. I may be able to cludge around and, if I'm lucky, get a make file modified because it's, it's kind of like a, a shell script, but that's it. Nothing else. So, for me, uh, I don't care if the source code is available or not. It's not why I'm doing this. Um, I'm not trying to fight for other people's free software rights by installing this. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for the right just to have a, 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 a second viable choice uh, as, my, as my operating system. I'm certainly not going to oppose the Free Software Foundation's goals, but I think so, the way that um, the distributions respond to the Free Software Foundation, it's a little bit... Um, it, results, it results in damage to the end user, really. Okay, And I'll, I'll describe some of the damage that, that take place. So what I do is I, I um, they're actually, uh, Sousa's got an idea that is potentially a very good idea, but is also very potentially dangerous if it isn't done right. It's called a one-click install, and so I, I looked for um, the ATI, you know, how do you install ATI drivers? I, I searched for that in Google. How do you install, you know, install? ATI drivers open SUSE 11.3, something like some search like that, and I found a web page. And on that web page, there's a one-click install. So you can click on the web page actually, and it will download this little file. And if you say go ahead and execute this file, that file contains, contains instructions to go ahead and download everything you need to accomplish what uh, what you intended to do. And in this case, or, or should that you intended to do, and in this case was installing the ATI drivers. Now, I finished the install, and I stupidly just went ahead and rebooted, which, because uh, what I ended up doing is, um, I'll show you, once the ATI, ATI drivers are installed, you're going to see, and I don't have, and I'll explain why my wobbly windows aren't working right now, but I'll show it to you when I'm, after I'm done with it. There is a... Probably under here. Things are showing from the weird areas. Okay, there's an ATI Catalyst Control Center. Okay, and um, so I go ahead and I go into that. You know, and this is basically just a way. You know, this, is, this is software made by ATI, so you can control the different aspects of your, of your graphics. You know, where they have more than one monitor, you know, aspects of a 3D, res you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when I first tried to go into this, it says, well, you can't use this because your, your driver isn't really installed. I thought I said, well, I, I just did this. It must be I need to reboot. Stupidly <laughs> rebooted. And when I tried to reboot, I got a black screen. And that's not a good place to be in. And the other mistake that I made is I'm not controlling my booting from SUSE. I'm actually controlling it from, from Ubuntu. So if I want to change what displays on my bootloader when I first <clears throat> turn the machine on to pick which operating system to go into, I have to go into Ubuntu. This is also good. If you're messing around with something in SUSE and it goes wrong, at least you can reboot and go back to Ubuntu and get it back. 
that that's what I ended up doing. I went back to Ubuntu, and then I added the fail-safe entry that, that I didn't have before. And I'll tell you that OpenSUSE's fail-safe entry is stronger than in Ubuntu's. Ubuntu should take a lesson from OpenSUSE in regards to the fail-safe entry. <laughs> okay? Because it boots you just into a console. Uh, Ubuntu doesn't do that. So if you're screwed with your video drivers, you, you, you need Nopix to get you out of it. And you got to hope it works. So, um... <clears throat> I went in there and I, I added the failsafe entry for, for OpenSUSE, and then I booted in, and I found a very helpful page of, of uh, there's these, a group of guys called the SUSE Lizards, and I guess they've been, maybe it implies they got wrinkly skin and they've been around and they've been using SUSE for a while, so they're going to release their, their little secrets on this web page, and they, they discussed the, uh, the, um, the ATI drivers. It's uh, actually, actually, it's OpenSUSE at Oak. No, that's not, okay, so, oh, sorry. This is the one-click install web page here, EnglishOpenSUSE.org, SDB, ATI drivers. And if you do this, uh, do uh, take the time to listen to the rest of this video instead of just doing that and rebooting and getting in the same situation that I was, okay? Listen, listen to the rest of what, what I have to say. Now, here's the lizards, OpenSUSE.org, and it's got... 2010, July 15th, ATI, HD, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's uh, HD 57XXX, FLX drivers, blah, blah, blah. Now, there's a few steps that this one-click install left out that put me in the situation that I was, <clears throat> that I was in, and I'm surprised that more people haven't gone back to the forum, but I, I guess they just gave up on SUSE after that, and... Um, probably are convinced the one-click install is, is a very horrible idea, <laughs> which I which I am too. Now, what you need, what you need basically what you need to do is in, on top of doing the one-click install, you have to, you have to, um, okay, I guess I have to get in a little more, um, I have to get in a little more technical detail. <coughs> when, when Linux boots up, First thing that happens is um, the boot loader passes uh, its um, control of the computer to a virtual file system called a RAM disk, and it's usually called init RD, and it's kept in the boot partition of the op of, of Linux, the year in, and then <clears throat> after that RAM disk is done loading a certain number of drivers, it passes control over to the kernel, who then that also loads up a bunch of drivers and then boots you into your operating system. And you're running off the actual kernel and not the, the kernel and the RAM disk with all the drivers in the RAM disk. Okay. And um, so basically, what was uh, there, there, uh, there's some incom incompatibility with the open source driver and the proprietary driver. And so if you boot in to SUSE with the RAM disk, you'll get a graphical picture of a lizard there booting up about two-thirds of the way to the boot process until the RAM disk passes control over to the kernel. And when it passes control to the kernel, the kernel won't be able to be able to load the driver that's provided by ATI, and you get a black screen. Not only do you get a black screen, but you can't log into any, any of the other terminals, so you're in trouble. And so what you have to do to not get in that situation is you have to pretty much uh, you have to update your RAM disk uh, to have ATI's driver and not the uh, open source driver in it. So when you boot in, glad I looked so I'm going to have to stop. So when you boot in, the kernel can load in the ATI driver. Okay, let me stop. 